Hi everyone, my name is Bob D'Ambrosio from Kendale Products Limited here in Fort Erie, Ontario. We're the Canadian distributor for Southern Pride Smokers and Broaster Pressure Fryers. But today, it's all about Southern Pride. We're standing here with our SPK 500 mobile unit. It's sitting on a trailer that we built here at Kendale. We do all of our trailers custom right in our fabrication shop. This is the same unit that you can find inside of a building or outside of a building on a trailer or on a patio. It's just this one is built so you can go wherever you want with it. We're gonna load up some of our brisket and our pork butts that we prepped in another video. Feel free to check it out on our channel. Here we have some bone-in pork butts that we've scored and spiced with our Southern Pride Premium Blend. Let's open up the unit. This is what's referred to as a hanger inside the unit. It's the structure that holds the food racks inside of the smoker. These are three tier, they hold three racks each, and I've already removed the middle because we're cooking a bulk food, and this allows the smoker to do 500 pounds of meat at one time. We'll start with these three pork butts on the bottom shelf. It's super important to load everything on the bottom of the hanger first, and you wanna load the bottom of every hanger before you get to loading the top of the hanger. The reason for that is during a cook, the meat will change shape and maybe shrink and lose some fat. And when it does that, it could cause an uneven weight distribution on the hanger. And if that's the case and you only have food loaded on the top, you're gonna to get into a situation that puts us on a pretty severe angle with minimal change. And that can get to interfering with other hangers and cause what we call a train wreck or a really bad day. I'm gonna use our plug-in rotisserie advanced foot pedal so I can keep my hands off the control panel and keep my hands off the smoker and leave it nice and clean. I'm advancing to the next hanger so I can load the bottom of that one with the next set of pork butts. When you let go, it stops immediately with the brake. So we're gonna load the bottom of the next hanger in the unit. The reason we're loading just the bottom rack of each hanger is also so we can keep in mind the weight distribution around the carousel inside the unit so that it doesn't wear the motor out too quickly by loading up one side before loading up the, the entire thing all the way around. Now that we've loaded all the bottom racks on each hanger, we're gonna go ahead and load the top with our next set of pork butts. Okay, that's how to load up your pork butts. We're gonna show you now how to load up some briskets in the same smoker. This SPK 500 will do up to 20 briskets. If they're smaller, maybe half briskets, you can do 30 or 40 of them at one time. Again, we're loading the bottom of each hanger first before moving on to the next one. And when loading, I'm making sure to load it pretty centered from front to back so we get this sitting nice and level during the cook. Now that we have the bottom of each hanger loaded with brisket, we can go ahead and load the top racks. All right, we've got our smoker full with 20 briskets right now. We're gonna close the doors and just let them cook. We've got it set to 205 degrees. These will cook for about 12 hours. If you choose to wrap, we'll let them cook for six or seven hours, get them to like a 165 internal, wrap them up in butcher's paper, give them a good spritz, send them back in until they're probe tender. Okay, everything's been loaded in the smoker. It's been cooking all night. We have a full load of pork butts and beef brisket in there. We're gonna pull them out, get the briskets wrapped up, and we'll put the pork butts into holding. I like to use cotton uh, heat resistant gloves covered by latex. This keeps them clean, but also gives your hands some heat resistance. And then you don't have to worry about getting too hot or burning your hands on the unload process. And how I like to be set up when we're outside unloading a smoker like this SPK 500 on a trailer, I like to have a drop table that's nice and clean, good surface area. We've got a speed rack with a few clean sheet pans. In this format, we can pull out a, quite a huge quantity of food and have it ready to go back in for uh, further prep or holding. So we'll grab a sheet pan, throw it on the table so it's ready, and open our smoker and see what we have in front of us. Some absolutely perfect beef brisket. This is looking really nice. We have a really, really complex crust forming on this. I'm gonna guess that the point is nice and tender, looking really beautiful. We'll pull two out, and I do two per pan in opposite orientation, and I'm unloading the top rack of each hanger individually. These will go on the speed rack, get ready to be wrapped inside. The smell is just incredible. I wish there was a way for you guys to experience it. Okay, we've got some briskets pulled out of the smoker, ready to go for wrapping. Now we're gonna use our rotisserie advance pedal 
to get to the butts. They cook around the same time and temp as uh, brisket, so it's nice to have a full smoker with all your proteins in it if possible for the overnight cook like we did here. And now we're just gonna get a pan ready on the table for these butts to come out. A handy tool when doing butts is one of these scrapers. They get so tender during a cook in one of these that uh, sometimes you'll lift it up and you get they fall right apart on the rack. So with this, it's a bit of an insurance policy. You can get the whole butt at once. So I'll go in from the right, just kind of scrape it off the rack and get that put onto the pan. We'll put three per pan here. And these things are really showing off that scoring, opening up, rendering that fat down, getting the premium blend built right into the flavor of the butts. And these will go onto the sheet pan rack so we can get them into holding. Okay, I'm gonna get to unloading the rest of these briskets and pork butts, and we'll go inside and so we can check out the wrapping process. When unloading one of these smokers, it's really important to unload the top rack first. Once the top rack's empty, you remove it, get it out of the way, and then unload the lower rack. It's the opposite of the loading process, if you remember from the last video. We just finished unloading the smoker with our brisket and our pork butts. Now we're getting into wrapping. Wrapping is something that's completely optional a brisket cook. You do not have to do it. I've found in my experience it does increase the quality just by a little bit. You get a little more even of a cook, you get a little bit more tenderness and a little bit more moisture retention as well as that you get to keep a lot more of the tallow that's going to render out of the brisket if you're able to trap it in that butcher's paper. So our setup is very simple. Again, we just have a a few pre-cut sheets of butcher's paper. It's 18 inch wax lined. We have three of our briskets that came out of the smoker fresh and we pulled them at 165 degrees, which is a really nice point to pull them. It means that it hasn't been fully cooked, it hasn't been fully broken down in terms of connective tissue, but it, does, it has formed a beautiful bark. The actual smoking of the cook period is completed, so we should have established a really great smoke ring in there, but we can't find that out until we cut into it later. Um, for now, let's get our Butcher's paper ready with our spritz. In our bottle today, uh, I change it up every time. Today we have uh, some apple cider vinegar, some apple juice, and some water. Uh, I've heard a lot of barbecue people get really crazy with these spritzes. I think just any kind of flavored moisture added to the brisket is a real help. So my first step is actually to wet the paper. So we'll just get it nice and primed with a bit of our special spritz. Same stuff I used in the smoker during the cook. So we've got a pretty generous coating here. Now when we wrap it up, it's gonna increase that quality of that steam bath. I started here in the corner on a bit of like a 45 degree angle, backed off towards me. I'm gonna go in a little more. And now take the corner and we kind of start our wrap by going that. Take the end in. I'm gonna roll through this butcher's paper while keeping the edge folded in. And we're going kind of up that way on the paper so we can get it nice and secure and it doesn't come undone as a, be a mean surprise during the cook. Okay, so we've got it pretty well covered. Now we're gonna focus on securing it so it doesn't come undone when it goes back in the smoker and is in the convection air. So take it, fold this under, okay, fold that down. And we'll do one more just to get it under. And that is a perfectly wrapped brisket. My version of perfect and it'll go back in the smoker until we like how tender it is by the feel of the probe. Okay, we're back out here at our SPK 500 mobile smoker where our briskets have gone back in with the butcher's wrap around them. Let's open them up and see if they're at the probe tenderness that I like. I found the best way to check a brisket isn't really through temperature, but more just through how it feels when the probe goes in. So let's see how they are. You'll see the uh, tallow has sweat through the butcher's paper. And that is, once it's through the paper, this is very buttery and gentle. And that's nice and tender. As far as I'm concerned, these briskets are done. They're all very tender when the probe goes in. I'm gonna pull them out and we can open up a butcher pack and see what we're dealing with. It should rip pretty easy now that we're out of the smoker. It's all pretty saturated with tallow, but it was able to stay near the brisket during the cook because we wrapped it. And that is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at this thing. 
The brisket's tender, super floppy. We've got all the fat rendered down nicely. The flat's tender, even though it's so lean. I can get my thumb right into it, pull meat off it. And then of course the point, super tender as well. Great job, Southern Pride. If you'd like to learn how to slice this brisket up, check out the other videos on our channel, and thanks for watching.